anybody who goes to Lourdes knows that in that place, in that town, among those people, among those mountains, there's a very special place for the sick. And, and Mary's uh, appeal to bring the sick and to pray for them and with them and to do penance for them. Um, you know, it's a mother saying, come on, don't repudiate your sick, don't push them away, don't hide them away, don't say, oh, we don't want to know, it's all a bit embarrassing, but bring them and give them center stage and they will teach you and they will teach you how to trust the mother whom God has given to you. Hi, Father Stephen. Hi. Good to see you. Thank you. Well, yeah. Great. What a beautiful place. Yeah, great. I know. So good. The message of Lourdes is a really beautiful one, and I think it's as important today as it was back 160 years ago. Um, Our Lady led Bernadette in prayer. It was also about penance. Our Lady said to Bernadette, do penance, um, pray for sinners, pray for conversion. Mm. Healing is so important at Lourdes. Very early on, people received miraculous healings here at the waters of Lourdes. And ever since then, people have come here looking for healing. And then a beautiful thing Mary said very clearly to Bernadette was, I would like people to build a chapel here in my honor and to come on procession in pilgrimage. And people came with lighted candles, just as they do today. So that sense of pilgrimage, of procession, of coming to a place of holiness, to have their lives renewed in faith. This is the heart of the message of Lourdes. But more generally, pilgrimages, they're so much a part of our Christian biblical faith. And I think the experience of people is such a profound one. Here in Lourdes, you hear the people singing behind me, the people around us. There's an experience of, of coming away from ordinary life, of, of coming to a place of holiness, um, not alone, with, with your brothers and sisters, with the church, and really renewing your faith, coming back to what is most important, which is God's love for us and our love for him and for each other. That, that's how we're renewed in faith through every pilgrimage, I think. Apparitions can be a beautiful gift from God to us, because as Christians, we believe in a God who, who speaks to us. He's a personal God, he's alive. Um, he speaks to us all in small ways, and sometimes he speaks to us, he steps in, as it were, in, in, in big, in, in supernatural, in extraordinary ways. So something like Lourdes or Fatima, it's an example of how, of how the Lord or Our Lady can step into our world and shake us up and remind us of something really important or push us in a new direction so that we can live our faith more deeply. I heard somewhere that Mary mentioned the Immaculate Conception in her apparition. I think part of the reason the Immaculate Conception came up, as it were, Mary used that title for herself, it was historical because that doctrine had been defined, had been presented to the church in a, a much clearer way just four years before, in 1854, by Pope Pius IX. So obviously Our Lady was wanting to help the church, to help us to understand that. Hmm. But the deeper reason, the meaning of the Immaculate Conception, it's about Our Lady and how she has been specially chosen, that there is a purity, a holiness about Our Lady from the very beginning of her life, from her conception. And this is what it looks like for someone to be free from original sin. That beauty, that holiness, that purity, that then allowed her to give her life completely to God. Okay. And it's the same for us. We're invited to that same holiness, that same beauty that we receive through faith and through baptism so that we can live that same faith and generosity that Our Lady did throughout her whole life. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is arguably the most important woman who's ever lived. Who was Mary of Nazareth? What part did she play in our salvation? How was she a model for us and, most importantly, 
Why do we need Mary today? Christianity without Mary is a modern invention. Mary is a finger always pointed towards Jesus. Because of her, God became one of us. He pitched his tent among us. She brings us to her son and she teaches us how to be disciples. This five session series will explore these vital questions about the life and present day reality of Mary, the mother of God. The church holds Mary up before us as our greatest example of being a disciple of her son. She is the ultimate disciple, the total Christian, the first Catholic Christian. Pope Benedict um, the 16th called her the perfect disciple. Her discipleship begins in prayer and it's nurtured in prayer. Along the way, we'll visit some of the world's most famous Marian sites. And meet inspiring experts who will help us to engage deeply with Mary, past and present. True devotion to Mary is a constant reminder of the absolute gift of salvation, God's grace in Christ. There was a time where I would never leave my house without a gun. Now I would never leave my house without a rosary. Ask, ask again, and if you don't get, continue to press. Mary is that presser. Because she is now presented as the Queen of Heaven, and she exercises immense power on our behalf. Mary has influenced all areas of our spiritual life the vital role of women, social action and care for the poor, the sick and suffering, ecology, the liturgy, interfaith dialogue, and evangelization. We are all called to conceive Christ, to tend Christ in the world around us. She shows the church how to be church. And at each stage, we need to be able to say, let it be. Mm -hmm.